Welcome to another edition of Live from the District, live from Southeast Easy Street. DJ Gemini and our special guest, Mr. Tony Lewis. How are you, sir? I'm great, man. You know me. Good to see you, man. Yeah, I love the, the shirt, dream, man. man. I love the shirt and yeah. the hat. I need that. I got you. That's Nadia. Easy. That's easy. Special delivery. Sir, at this time, we would love to give you your flowers, brother. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, on behalf of, of you know, Life in the District, you know, the contributions that you've made to our community, yeah. man, have been amazing to see, to bear witness to your greatness, man, has been amazing to watch, man, I mean, for what you've done to the community, done for the community, uh, to bring your father home, man, is, yeah. man, yeah, to be, I, I that, mean, bro. to be able to yeah. see this happen, so uh, we want to give you your flowers now, My okay? Man. Thank you, man, I appreciate that, okay. man, no doubt. Put them on Thank your you. side. Yeah. Thank All you, right. Man. It's all right, man. Yeah, it's all right. So, man, um, one of the things um, that I wanted to talk to you about um, is, like, what has happened, you know, since your father came home, man. How has it been mm. as far as, you know, him, from a human standpoint, him being able to embrace his grandchild, bro. Yeah, yeah. How was, I know it has to be something special to yeah, see, bro. It's been, uh, as we approach 90 days, um, mm. That he's been home after being gone 34 years. Um, every day has been, uh, we've been living a dream. Things we would talk about. Um, and, and, I, and I want people to really understand that the simple things, eating breakfast together, eating dinner, going to a movie, taking him to work, him going to community events with me, you know? Um, all the things that we only could experience through pictures and conversations, right? Mm -hmm. um, him going to gymnastics practice with my daughters, him, you know, going with me to take them to school. He went on a field trip with my youngest daughter uh, the other day, right? So mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things um, that uh, have been, uh, you know, that were a dream for us and now a reality uh, has been the most incredible thing. Um, I, I can't really find the words truly to, to really explain uh, what it's been like f fully. Uh, and, and how I feel, right? I don't even know if I've processed it, you know. Uh, man, I get emotional yeah, just yeah, thinking right. it, bro, yeah. bro. I get, yeah. when I saw some of the photos on yeah. the Instagram and just that kind of like had me choked up. It's yeah, like man. just thinking about everything that he went through, the stuff that you went through, and now he's holding on to, he's, he's in, holding on to his grandchild, yeah. like. Yeah, he home, he free. Uh. He free, my father went to prison, man. I was, I was playing with G.I. Joe and, and <laughs> he, man. Right. Wow. I read the book. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I think, you know, I think I think what happens, though, like, you hear about my father being this big drug king pending. Yeah. You know, me being a, you know, um, you know what I am, right? Mm -hmm. I think in the midst of that, people lose sight of that kind of stuff, though. Right? That, that, that. Right? And because, you know, um, a person was able to, by the grace of God, kind of uh, maintain and be strong, um, that people tend not to, they miss sort of that human aspect. Mm. Um, so I think it's very important to talk about how much distance, right? Me as a 43 year old man today, we went to jail when I was nine. Mm. Actually, I wasn't even nine yet. I turned nine the next month. Uh, you know, went to jail in April, I turned nine in May. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so now, and I have a nine year old, soon to be 10 year old daughter and a six year old, soon, soon to be seven year old daughter, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so. Uh, he's coming home. He's come home to them sort of in that same period that I was when he went away. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm incredibly grateful for that. I no longer have to take my children in the federal prison. Um, and, and But the main thing for me, for really, is just watch him experience freedom. You know, I, when I was growing up, I used to want him to come home for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I don't need him. I don't need him for nothing. You know, now, you know, I just, it's, it's, it's just about him and him experiencing them and experiencing freedom and learning this city that's so different. Um, and this is just. That's my next question. Yeah, yeah. That was that I think that was mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh okay. Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the question that I want to go, yeah, go ahead, Yeah, man. How, well, first of all, man, Tony, I think I've seen Tony maybe about five times since his dad's been home. I've only seen him 
maybe once without his dad. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe one time, you know, yeah. without his dad. So how is he just embracing, like, you know, it's moving fast out here now. Yeah, you man. Know what I mean? And so, things yeah. look totally different. Yeah, yeah. Totally looking different out the city. window yeah, now, right? you know what right? The you walk know, wasn't even here, <laughs> yeah, bro. Not, 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 not this. Yeah, None yeah. of this. You know what's crazy, though, right? I think, <laughs> so, so. To address the question, it's, it's definitely much different, and he's uh you know it's a, it's an adjustment period, of course, right? It's a, a huge adjustment to be honest with you, right? Um, but he's enjoying it. I mean, it's you know one of his big things is just like you know we talk about gentrification. I've tried to keep him as current as possible, but like you know for him to see white people on our block is just is mind blowing, <laughs> right? Like what it's was he, mind blowing? When, like oh. when 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 pop goes down like U Street, no, no, on Hannah we ain't got to go to U Street. Yeah, 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 see, right this there. Was, Right, right, right. I'm saying I'm on our street. Right, our street. That's the thing. When he saw Dunbar, what? What the? When he saw Dunbar, you know what I'm saying? Like what? Like this is crazy. Where is Sir some quarter at? Where is Sir some quarter? That's right. Exactly. I mean, I go past the street all the time, bro. For some of us that ain't even been nowhere, it's it's a similar sort of thing. I think people again lose context of that. You know, in the city, this city probably has changed more in the last. 15 years, then it, then it, then it changed in the previous 115. Mm. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, it's sort of, there is no, I'm talking on a national level, we know gentrification is kind of happening, but there is no way in America that's comparative to Washington, D.C. None as it relates to gentrification. Right. None, right? And I, some people say it started here, bro. Yeah, I mean. Like, this is the birthplace. I think, I think, but I think the parallel between, um, you know, speaking about my dad, you know, hit the time he went away, the parallel between the crack epidemic with D.C. was the, the crack capital uh, of the United States and it being the gentrification capital. They have, those two things are very aligned. And in, 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 in the mass exodus of black people out of this city um, is really the black people that were, you know, impacted the most by the crack epidemic. Um, and, and I think the, 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 the in terms of what else runs parallel is, you know, um, the decisions that my father made, you know, out of survival and and, 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 and that shit just snowballed. Um, but the things that he played a part in in terms of bringing damage to the community, uh, you know, I was a vessel for him to help him repair some of that. And my, my life's work has been in repairing that. Mm. So, you know, it's kind of a full circle situation. I'm glad to have him here. Uh, I know we're going to do a lot more um, in terms of that Uh uh, repairing right, some well, of that. I've heard him speak on this. I heard some other interviews as far as you know him uh, being contrite about it, apologizing, saying he was sorry, Correct. but and also talking about like what he wants to do next. So mm -hmm. what what what's what's happening next with as far as that repair work and that 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 atonement work that you guys are gonna be doing? Sure. So the first thing on the on the agenda is uh, I hold uh, don't get taken movement, uh, which is really gonna be about. Uh, advocacy to help uh, reunite more American families like ours, um, really pressing upon the Biden administration. Um, we know Joe Biden as a senator was, was sort of the architect of the system of mass incarceration mm -hmm. as we know it on the federal level today. Mm -hmm. with the 1986 crime bill and the 1994 crime bill, 1986 crime bill that created the, the 100 to 1 disparity between powder cocaine and crack cocaine, which is probably the primary driver of the system of mass incarceration and mm -hmm. all other things. Um, and he's done nothing. He ran on writing that wrong, and he's done nothing um, since being president. And so we plan on, and we've already started. We've had conversations. Uh, we've met with DOJ. We're doing things to help push the administration to do what's right, um, which is reunite families, people that have paid their debt to society, people that have these draconian sentences that just totally outweigh their crimes. So it's not about a get out of jail free card, but it's about people who have been held accountable and it's time to bring them home. The other side of that though, is that we need real policy change around hiring policies and things of that nature, housing policies, so that when people do return. A real second right, chance. Absolutely. A real second, a real chance. second chance. Not a fake ass second chance, right, absolutely. but a real one. And the federal, we feel like the federal workforce should be the model for what should happen. If the federal government does it, then you can go to the Fortune 500 companies and say, look, we doing it, what y'all doing? Right, you know what I mean? that tax break yeah. for doing it. So that's absolutely, um, yeah, amongst other things, right? And that's where we where we are, um, obviously, too, to, to figure out where we can help in this um, public safety push here in the city, mm -hmm. uh, but also nationally. Where, where can we fill in to give to consult, to give guidance, um, to give credibility and validation? And ultimately, trying to also do a better job of linking the inside to the outside. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of voices that are incarcerated that can have um, some impact uh, in the community. 
Um, but we got to create a mechanism by which they can do that um, and give back and try to steer people away from some of the decisions that they make. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about what the future holds. It's funny that you bring that up because I was just on the radio on Saturday and I got a, a collect call. This is a collect call from a so-and-so correctional facility in Washington, D.C. Can you accept this call? And I was recording because mm -hmm. I record all my phone calls. And then I stopped. I said, I can't, I can't accept this phone call. And then I explained to my listeners as I was, I was like, I want to speak to the brothers and sisters that are on lockdown right now. I said, you're, you know, uh, you know our prayers are with y'all, but your community needs you. Yeah. And y'all have some of the answers to the problems that's going on in the streets right now. And we need y'all to do the right thing while you're in there and come on home because your families need you, your community needs you. And that's exactly what you're talking about because I, I believe that that's true, man. It's, it's obvious. Statistics tell us, numbers don't lie, that we are over-incarcerated. This is what happened. We're over-incarcerated, yeah. and, the, and the sentences that we're getting are not... It, it, the math don't add up, yeah. bro. And especially, I mean, you think about in a place like D.C., right? So nationally, absolutely, we're disproportionately represented in the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. But in D.C., where we used to be chocolate city, but all the problems here in D.C. still remain chocolate. We, we, we 48, 49% of the population, but we 90%. 5%, 94, 95% of the prison population, mm -hmm. 94, 95% of the of homicide victims, 94, 95% of those that are unemployed, 94, 95% of those that are dealing with mental health issues, addiction issues, overdose, right? We the, we the overdose capital mm -hmm. in the, uh, of America right now, right? So and it's all bearing down on the same community, native black people mm -hmm. from, I'm talking about black DC natives. So right. it's not black people in Washington, it's black people from Washington. And so we look at, that group of people, mm -hmm. that's that's who in prison, that's who dying, that's who ODing, that's who grade scores are low, that's who can't get a job. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we're we, we're moving, right? That's why we're leaving. And so every day I'm getting up trying to remedy that problem, but it starts with access to opportunity, and we do a great job here of looking at and say so we got black this and black that and black that. But systemically, right? Black those same black people that we put in the damn shit, thing change, bro. It's because the same we don't. Old stuff. Because it's like it's like we didn't build the car though. We we may be driving the car, right? right. Theoretically mm -hmm. here in DC, but we ain't build the car, right? So if the car was built on white supremacy, the driver is driving a car that is, you know, what I'm saying that 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 is leading towards white supremacy still. Mm. And so though we have more opportunity than say other places throughout this country, we gotta do the things that me that we gotta do enough. We can't just do feel good because we're doing more than somebody else somewhere else. We mm -hmm. got to do what it takes to make it right here. And, um, you know, that's like, you know, moving forward now that I've been able to. And I, another thing, I think, you know, getting my father home, it's not lost on me how significant that I don't, people don't really understand what it took and how improbable that really was. Mm hmm. You know what it's I'm a saying? movie, bro. Yeah, yeah, there's no question about it. That joint is a movie. It, yeah. There's no question about it. I don't know if we need a part two to slug or what, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, no, no, all of the above. Yeah. Not all of the above, man. Um, but you know, I, I think, I think what, um, you know, often even we talk about the, 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 the you know, people talk about we need a movie, and you know, which I totally agree. But you know, when we start talking about, I mean, had some conversations about that, right? But like, what would the movie be, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that. Your know, people still would be stuck on it. I'm perfectly okay with making a movie about how much cocaine my father sold. In, it's, even in the midst of all that I've done as a public servant and helping thousands of people and saving lives, all that stuff, and ultimately getting him out, mm -hmm. that people still, that still in people's mind is more uh, marketable or attractive mm -hmm. than the whole story. Right. Then slug as it is, I thought slug even before getting him out of jail, slug should have been a movie because mm -hmm. I I've been around this whole country and I, and I say this all difference in humility, and everybody y'all know me, so I, I don't think I have to say that, but I but I will. Um, but I be looking for me. It ain't no. It, it, I'm, we, we can line it up. Let's just line up the accomplishments. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like seriously. But I sit and I watch people get on certain platforms and get invited to their certain things and talk about certain things, which that's perfectly okay. I've never had an issue with it. But my point I'm making is, now that this has happened though, like moving forward, I'm very, very keen on the story that the narrative. Not that I want to tell the story that should be told. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like in that uh, young black, young people in this country, all over, uh, no matter what they, what their backgrounds are, can look at somebody that come from a certain circumstance, that did it the right way, that served others, that put others before him, um, 
that that person is is held up. That's why I appreciate when you give me. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. There's too many times when it comes to us and our stories. If it ain't crash and burn, people ain't interested yeah. interested in it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, but but my my shit got all the bells and whistles too. On top of that, right? So you know, but we gotta get to a point where I'm standing on that positive ain't boring. I'm saying positive mm -hmm. ain't less exciting. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? It's how you tell yeah, the story. Yeah, exactly. And these folks yeah, know how to do it, bro. Fact. They it's know how to do it. No, that's they, fine. I can yeah, give yeah. you other examples of films that the, the way they've done it, making these people look all nice. And I mean, this is like an American history, bro. Yeah. We already know that most of these cats that got all the dough, man, was drug dealers, yeah. you know, and, and, you and, and you know, yeah, and, 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 and out here with the uh, alcohol thing and doing all these uh -huh. things and clean their money and now sure. we we look at them as being the great like the best things to slice bread bro uh, they sure. change their narrative sure. why can't we change this sure. one yeah yeah but i mean yeah we don't gotta fabricate this one though right that's my point though right yeah we ain't gotta throw nothing on. we gotta tell it just like it is right I ch we changed the narrative already. I don't right. need nobody to change. I just need somebody right. willing to tell it. That's what I'm saying. Right. Tell the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I get so you no, I totally agree mm -hmm. with what you saying, but I was like I was saying on the, on something else I was on. I was saying this really is like if you watch The Godfather, right? The, One of my favorite movies. Yeah, right. That's so joint, yeah. V Vito Vito wanted Michael to take the family legit. Right. Right? Like this that in real life though. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael didn't I did. I took the family legit. Mm -hmm. But it's everything that that is but except the ending, you know, the trajectory of the movie is different because I actually did it. I did what they was intending to do, right? right? You understand what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. if it had I if I'm from excuse me, if I'm from LA or if I'm from New York and damn, if I'm white, like you think about this, if John Gotti Jr did what I did. Could you imagine what the fuck? Like, right. Could you no, seriously. Right. right. Uh, yeah. It'll be a movie. It would be a, it'll be everywhere you turn. <laughs> right, right. Before the movie, it'll be everywhere right. you turn. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like seriously. You know what I mean? Or anybody else, you know what I mean? Just so to your point, I'm just saying, I totally agree. And I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm, 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 I'm definitely clear uh, and, and aware. Um, but that's beside, to me, the, the bigger thing, man, for me is to continue to help out people keep serving people, um, continue to be an example, you know what I mean? And just enjoying my dad being in freedom, man. You know, all other stuff, whatever's intended will come. And yeah. God already gave yeah. me my biggest blessing, bro. I, I'm, that I'm is, cool, yeah. honestly. You know, I ain't gonna lose no sleep and we don't get no movie, I'm right. all right. But I mean, you know, it's still early in the story, yeah, still. It's still fresh. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, it's still, sure. it's still going, man. But, you know, I just want to commend you on, man. It's hope, you know what I mean? I think hope, I don't see them shirts no more. Yeah, Where man. all the shirts at? <laughs> the yeah. shirts, the signs, yeah. all of it. Yeah. Three Tony oh. Lewis joint. Yeah, yeah, and I still want one. You don't burn them. I need a know, they were, You know, them <laughs> shirts, they were almost becoming like, uh, almost a, you know what I mean? Like a whole thing in itself. Right, Just yeah. the shirts. Right, right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, man. Them shirts in itself. Super but, man, grateful, you know, man, too, yeah. for, the, for the community. You know, so, so it's hope, man. And that, that, that chapter, I guess, that movie, I guess it's a new chapter, I guess, man. Yeah. You know, to the whole thing, man. You know, you just kind of get started, man. Yeah, bro. Just commending you on that, man, and, you, and man. you know, definitely keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I don't you know, know how to do nothing else. For sure, yeah, 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 man. <laughs> you know man. Tony saying? be working, you know, I, I I never see him not working, yeah, you know what I mean? I you just see him that. in the streets and just, yeah. you know, he getting busy, man. So, you know, commend yeah. you on that. Thank you so much. Final piece I want to talk to you about is, is this, uh, Mr. Lewis. Um, You know, we work together, all three of us work together. Yeah. Sure. Uh, over at the ones Office of Neighborhood uh, Safety and Engagement with the Pathways Program. I want to shout out to our good friend, uh, Dr. Majid, the whole crew over there. Rest in peace, Rest in Linda peace. Harley Harper. Rest in peace to Linda Harley Harper. Yeah. Really? Um, let's park right there, man, um, and talk about the importance of this woman when we're talking about being a peacemaker and, and, and being about peace in Washington, D.C. Some of your thoughts on Linda. Yeah, man. Um, we, 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 we. We lost the queen. We lost somebody who poured into so many other people who um, wanted to see others grow. And, and when you engage with Linda, when you talk to Linda, rather you, you guys shared the same uh, outlook on something, you left that conversation feeling like um, she cared about how you felt, you know what I'm saying? And she was gonna do, if, if, if it was something that she could do to help you get to your goal, that she was gonna do it. You didn't have to question it. Um, from, 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 from juvenile justice to 
being, um, at, you know, in the work she did at DYS to the work she did at the Office of Gun Violence Prevention, being the first director there, you know, getting that building blocks, getting that off the ground, and then obviously being, you know, a dual appointment, right? She ran, she was the director of that and then became the director of ones. Um, yeah. Um, f to lose her, man, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, something that, you know, uh, we're going to feel that. But I think any of us that ever work with her and around her, um, her legacy is going to live on through us. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to think about her when we're, uh, as we continue to tackle this issue and, and how much she wanted peace and uh, how she always challenged us to think past what we thought we knew. Um, that's what I'm going to remember the most about her. Uh, and I, I think uh, she had, in my opinion, um, not that a funeral can be beautiful, but she had the most beautiful send off that I think I've ever personally uh, attended, mm -hmm. um, and and it was fitting for her. Okay, final question. Um, for what Washington D.C. is experiencing right now in regards to gun violence, uh, what would you like to say to the city, man? What 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 do we need to slow this thing down, man? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, first, I think is is, is individual residents. Um, where you have to figure out what you can do. Um, I think some of that is just as simple as saying hello, smiling at people, you know what I'm saying, bringing good energy. Um, we can't want people to disappear. We got to think about how can we help, what can we do more of. Back to the things I shared earlier about what native Washingtonians are going through. Um, I think we have to be hyper-focused on that group, um, providing access to opportunity, uh, you know, really clearing the pathways, addressing policy issues that keep them out of uh, certain careers and jobs with certain earning potentials. Um, I think that's the way we have to address poverty. Can't address violence. We have to address poverty. You address poverty, you address violence. And I think um, in this city, there's a very small group of people that are poor, right? Mm -hmm. if, and, uh, so, so I think we can be hyper-focused on them. You don't take anything away from other residents by focusing on that group of people. Mm -hmm. If we did that by default, Right. If we was, if we ever kept that group of people safe, you know, financially safe, obviously from a public safety standpoint versus trying to keep us, quote unquote, us safe from them. If we kept them safe. Right. Mm -hmm. Then by default, the rest of us are, 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 are safer. And I think that has to be the framework by which we we, we work from to get that accomplished. And, and I think if the goal is addressing poverty, we do that. Um, but until we do that. You're not gonna. We tried. We're not gonna lock our way. We don't lock people up. Enough people up, right? You're not gonna do that. We tried that. And, and, and if you ask me, part of what happened in the '90s and early 2000s in terms of lock them up, lock them up, lock them up. That's why we're dealing with what we're dealing right. with today. You know what? Okay. Let me tell you what's crazy about what you just said. This is something that both me and Linda agreed upon in another interview, man. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. This is the truth. Wow. Any of us that know like that, wow. mass incarceration destabilized our community Took so Took the brothers much. out the community. Dad, now dad, we got dad, these young man. people running around with not, without yeah. their daddy and, That's right. and the pain. And what's, what's also incredible, even when daddy and uncle and big brother and big cousin return, it takes too much to get them re-engaged. Right. Because of the, the policy issues and things of that nature. Not to mention, we, outside of uh, our, our native uh, brothers and sisters on reservations, it's the only place in America where you break a local law and you still go to the federal system. We don't have a, a, a local prison system. You, mm -hmm. do your, you do your time in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, which we have no autonomy over what kind of interventions they get, what type of training, what type of skill sets they're offered, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So people come back, they return to us ill-prepared to be competitive in one of the most competitive job markets in the country. Right. Right, so this is that's a very layered lady. thing. There's no lady. question about it. Wow. But, uh, yeah, so we gotta, that's what we got to do, man. Try to uh, read black Washingtonians of poverty. Bro, we, we appreciate everything that you've done thus far. And uh, we're going to, um, you know, we're praying that God will continue to use you in a mighty way to be able to be a champion that you are, man. And God bless you and your work, all right? Yeah, same to you, bro. Much all right. love, man. All right, love yes, you too. Yes, sir. Tony yes, Lewis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace and love. Live from the district. Live from the district. Live, live, live from the district.